guys welcome back to my channel in this video we will see how to create a flask web application in digital ocean so in the previous video we have seen how to create a django web app in digital ocean so the steps will be pretty much uh, similar to the previous video with minute modification now if you feel that uh, digital oceans or the cloud hosting platform is little bit tough for you then i would recommend shared hosting as well because in shared hosting as well you will be able to launch uh, python web app applications like Django or uh, on Flask so I will put a link in the card section for the video that I already have in my channel which explains how to host your uh, Django or Flask applications on shared hosting but this video will be completely dedicated for Flask application and the steps to deploy it in DigitalOcean so I have uh, put a link in the description for DigitalOcean once you click on that you will have to do a sign up process and you will get hundred dollar of uh, credit which will be valid for uh, two months now please note that during the sign up process you will be asked for your credit card information so debit card information and a small amount will be charged from your account but uh, that will be reversed back to your account immediately so don't worry about uh, that part so without any further delay let's uh, go to my desktop screen and see how to deploy a flask web application in digital ocean here i am with my desktop and uh, first of all you will have to go to github and uh, in github you will have to create a file called requirements.txt within your uh, flask uh, web app so i have this simple flask app uh, demo for this particular video and here i have to create two files first file is requirements.txt so requirements.txt file should have uh, all the libraries that is needed for your web applications to run for example flask and uh, gunicorn so gunicorn is basically needed uh, for your web app web app to run on digital ocean so don't forget to mention gunicorn in your uh, requirements.txt file now along with uh, requirements.txt file you will also have to create a file called gunicorn underscore config.py now inside this you will have to mention two lines bind is equal to 0.0.0.0.0 colon 80 or any other ports also you can give workers you can give two or any amount uh, you can give here now once this two file is there in your uh, flask repository along with other necessary libraries you are done from uh, github side now once you click the link given in the description you will be routed to a page like this so as mentioned earlier complete the sign up process and once you complete the sign up process you will be able to see a console like this so and in left hand side you will be able to see a section called uh, project so click on new project so project is basically helps you to segregate your uh, all web apps for example if you want to host a django application in one project and if you want to deploy your uh, flask application then you can also create a new project and do that so name of the project let me just give it uh, flask you can give anything you want now select the purpose now for purpose you will be able to see lot of options so based on the requirements or based on the thing that you are building your app you can select now web application sounds good to me so i will select that and click on create project next step is to move resources into flask not necessary so skip for now now the project has been created now on the left hand side you will be able to see a option called manage now under manage click on apps now click on create app now we'll have to select service provider as our code is on github i will select uh, github and uh, below i will have to click on this repository so it will list out all the repositories that you have in your github account if you are not able to see the required repository then you will have to click on edit your github permissions it will take you to the github console provide your password over there click confirm and uh, under repository access you will be able to provide permission to all your repositories or select repositories so now under select repositories you have uh, the repositories whose permissions are not yet provided so i will just select any one of them and click on uh, save now it will automatically redirect it to you the digital ocean console and uh, you again have to select uh, the repositories 
So let me select the repositories that I want. That is simple Flask app and uh, it will ask you which branch you want. So I will keep it as master. Make sure you click on this auto deploy options because whenever you make any changes in the GitHub account or in the repositories of your uh, Flask application, then automatically this will be reflected in this particular project or in this particular app. Now click on next. Now we'll have to click on edit plans. So plan is basically helps you to decide how much amount you want to pay for your particular. If you believe that your uh, web app is going to handle thousands and millions of traffic, then definitely you should go for pro plan. But uh, if it's a very basic websites and uh, the web visitors are also very minimal, then you can go for basic and under basic you can select the size. So let me just select the size of basic and uh, then click on uh, back and now we will have to click on this edit button here now here we'll have to modify one options in run dot run commands so click on edit here now here you have to mention flask app colon app now this flask app is nothing but uh, the file name within which your uh, codes are written so in my case it is flask app dot py if your case it is different then uh, instead of uh, flask app you will have to give that particular file name now this is done click on save and go back and now you can click on next now global and uh, variables related to your uh, flask application if you have any you can mention that else uh, you can click on next now reason you can uh, click on edit to select the reason which is closer to you so I will keep it as uh, the same and click on save option now click on uh, next now on this page you will have to review all the options that you have uh, provided and uh, then click on create resources so once you click on create resources a resource will be created and uh, it will start building your app now if you want to know what is happening in backend then click on this go to build logs and you will be able to see all the things that is happening in backend in this console so you will be able to see the progress as well but uh, nothing you have to do so for now let me just uh, pause this video and I will come back once it is uh, complete so the app is successfully created you can see the app health check is available now if you want to access uh, the app then this particular URL you need to use now if I click on this I should be able to see my app and uh, here it is hello world again now this is not a proper custom domain now what we will do we will add a proper custom domain now for that domain name you can use uh, any domain name provider I basically use uh, Namecheap and it's basically very simple domain provider and a uh, little bit uh, it has a reasonable price as well now first of all you will have to go to the settings section of your app go a little bit down you will find a section called domains click on edit and click on add domain now mention the domain names I already have a domain name in uh, Namecheap I will just mention that and uh, after that you will be able to see additional options so we manage your domains under this section you will be able to find the name server of the digital ocean you can copy that and go back to your uh, Namecheap or your domain name provider and in case of Namecheap, we'll have to click on manage and this is the domain name and we'll have to click the manage and uh, under manage, we'll have to make sure that we are under this uh, domain section. Under that, find a section called name server and then select custom DNS. So under this custom DNS, you will have to paste the digital oceans name server so i already have pasted it here so you can see two name servers ns1.digitalocean.com and ns2.digitalocean.com now two is enough now once this is done we are done from uh, the domain name provider now let's go back to the digital ocean co console and uh, click on add domain and you can see a new new domain name has been uh, added now if you want to see the status again go back to the domain section and click on edit 
now you will be able to see a status called a pending so it usually takes 15 to 20 minutes but sometimes it may also take 48 hours but uh, so far whatever domain name i have added to DigitalOcean, it's basically took around 15 to 20 minutes now wait for that much amount of time and again check the status the status should be in active state if you feel that uh, after 15 minutes 20 minutes also it's still the same you can try refreshing this uh, page sometimes it's basically take the information from the cache and it will show you the pending status only now let me go back uh, to domain section and click on edit and you can see it is now in configuring state so i will again pause this video for some times and once it is in active state i will come back now the state is active and uh, it took around uh, 10 to 15 minutes for this uh, status to be active now once this is active you can click on your domain name and see if your website is accessible or not so as you can see my website is accessible here with the custom domain name that i have uh, provided now this is the process to create a flask web application in digital ocean now if you have any question put it in comment section and I, I will try to answer them and don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon so that uh, whatever new video i upload in my channel you will get a notification immediately thanks again for watching this video